Wow. Old subscribers will remember this brilliant piece from Maisto that's right in front of you. This is the, uh, well, it came with a very nice 59 Chevy uh, Impala. And that was supposed to be stuck on the back there. It's a Maisto vehicle. It comes in, uh, it's probably the most expensive Maisto or Maisto you're going to buy in the UK right now. Um, they're about six pounds ago. Um, very worth the money and currently this is my only 164 scale hauler of this kind of nature and it's a proper nice vehicle I'm guessing it's based on the International uh, Durastar um, well, it's a very similar vehicle to an International although it's highly customized up and really really fruity but in the background Lamar Fashion uh, gave me this fantastic piece from Greenlight this is the NYPD uh, International Durastar 4400 as you can see the NYPD everywhere it's all going on and I'm really gonna want to free the piece on this one Lamar so this is probably my first one out the box I've already pre-cut the box so it's definitely gonna come out whatever happens so here we go first ever time I've ever put my hands on um, one of these 164 green lights trucks and it comes from, I'll just show you the back of the packet, international thing to do, yeah. green light collectibles, very tasty, made in China, as we know they are now, and it's all NYC'd up, that's a nice little sticker on the back there, limited edition, people collecting green light in the UK, I had a question, um, one of my subs asked about picking up um, green lights, and you can get them, but you need to go to toy fairs or custom car shows or something weird like that. It's the only place I've seen them for sale in the UK. Now the thing that's uh, upset Lamar about this vehicle, and I can understand why when you're paying probably the best part of $10 for something, you expect everything to work. And he noticed this piece here floating around in the packet. It doesn't appear to have been snapped off at all. I'm looking at it. Although there is a little bit of, just if you look up the top there, that could well be a snap. And I'm guessing that this comes from the rear end of the vehicle somewhere. So we'll have a look around the rear here. Um, very hard to tell exactly where it comes from. But what I like about green light vehicles, uh, because we don't see them in the UK, um, you probably see them all the time in America. So you kind of get used to this quality. What I like about these vehicles is all the attention to detail and, and it's got tons of it all over it, isn't it? Look at those stickers on the front there. You've got the, the international logo on the grill. Lovely grill work. This thing's quite heavy as well. All this front end is um, die cast. Um, is this a die cast bed? <laughs> it, do, it does feel like it's made of metal, actually. But which, opposed to the, uh, the Maisto, is all plastic at the back here. Those Julies actually look like they are individual tyres. I may be wrong without ripping them off, but they do actually look like it's got two sets of tyres on the back there. Nice skinny wheels, very good detail on this model. Um, we'll have a look around, completely look around the base here. You can see it says green light 2014. That'd be the copyright for the vehicle, not necessarily for this vehicle. I believe this is a 2016 vehicle. I've got this feeling that this bed should move, but I don't think it does. Maybe it lifts. I don't know. There doesn't seem to be any mechanism there to make it lift up. It's got something going on underneath, which is on a hinge. Can you see underneath there? A bit of a hinge there. Now, maybe that's something to do with the bit that's snapped off. I just don't know. It doesn't seem to move. want to move, although it is kind of pinned in. Lovely uh, chassis details, as you can see. I mean, I'm, as I'm playing around with it, I'm noticing all this lovely engine detail. We've got all the drive shafts going down to the, the rear, rear axles there. And all over, look at those rear views, wow. All over a very, very tidy little vehicle. It's got the, the little thing, the pulley there that pulls the vehicle onto the, the flatbed. Um, I'm guessing that the flatbed doesn't move. So we just have a quick look at the, this, see where this goes on here. I'm not getting much. Um, here we go. Yeah, that there. I can see it snapped there. That would actually link up quite nicely with this piece here. And that goes in there like that. 
Okay, so that's going to take a little bit of glue. I'm going to come back with some glue and have a look. Right then, so we're going to use some glue. I use uh, super glue. Uh, this is a Gorilla super glue. It's supposed to be the best super glue around. I'm just trying it out right now. It hasn't let me down so far. So that's really good. Nice product, easy to get hold of from uh, most DIY shops. And make sure it's a gel. Gel's really good for uh, modeling because um, gel has a good habit of not dripping everywhere. So once it's applied to the object, um, it generally stays where you want it to stay. And um, it's job done. I, I, I learnt um, all about um, different adhesives when I was making my model tanks. Um, and super glues are the best, best things to use when you're dealing with uh, brass rods and um, just metals in general. I don't know if we're going to get this a very good picture of this, but uh, I noticed there's a good front end on this. You can see it's got some uh, diamond plate on there. So I'm just going to stick that on, spread it around a little bit onto the, the item that needs to be glued, and press it on. So it's not easy on camera. I would normally do this uh, while sitting at a desk. We're going to try and do it anyway. There we go. It's squiggling around a little bit. So I'll just try a little bit more. Um, there we go. As the, of course, as the glue cures, it um, dry as it dries out a little bit. Can we see that? As the glue starts to dry out, it just gets a little bit more stodgy, and you can f actually adjust and there we go it's actually dried solid now so um, there you go just a tiny squidge before it sets hard and there we have I don't know if you can see that one fixed piece of kit there we go now that should um, that should be okay and you can see why it's broken off because it's such a, a sticking out way hey piece but there we go and it sits really nicely actually next to that maesto. The maesto is a huge, massive thing. Awesome. interesting piece of kit that's um, it's been discovered in this uh, this old house as you can see it's nice and dark in here oh yes now what what is it we've come to look at we're gonna have a look at this this is the uh, Johnny Lightning power compressor from around about 1960 nine or thereabouts I'm guessing I've no idea but I'll tell you what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look in the box look at that smoke kit Wow oh yes this is Johnny Lightning in the UK here we go 1970 can you complete your collection I don't think so. to bring this uh, this piece of kit downstairs and uh, as you can see it's, uh, it's a very old piece of cardboard very nice old box let's have a look inside you can see what's that in there we've got a car we've got what looks like uh, you can see on there a topper toy power compressor You know this thing is pretty old. 
Oh look, it's got some instructions as well. So what we'll do then, we'll check out the instructions first. Not something we normally do, but seeing as this thing is so old, I think, um, oh yeah, so that's how you plug it in. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work. All I know is it's pretty ancient. 1970 so uh, do the maths you're looking at a good 40 years old here so there's a good chance that the rubber has um, depleted a lot that's interesting there we go oh yeah and straight off the bat, um, it's a good, sturdy looking piece of kit. So uh, your average, uh, I suppose your eight, nine year old tops would be enjoying this piece of kit. Comes with a, uh, a built-in marker gauge there, tells you how much uh, air compression you've got inside what looks to be like some kind of, uh, I don't know really, let's have a look shall we? So here we have the original piece with the, uh, with the machine. Seems to contain some kind of airbag, I would imagine. And then the, the compressor pushes the air out the back and uh, gives you some extra needed speed down those uh, hills. So, uh, should we give it a go? See how it works? Let's do it, shall we? There we go. So we put the car inside the machine. It's got place like a looks like what is like a bicycle pump affair. Uh, the little the little lever there I'm pulling back pushes the uh, car into some kind of nozzle. As you see. So you lift your handle. This is where it gets interesting. Okay, and then you push down the air into the machine. Oh yeah. Is it going to work? Oh dear, we're not getting much on that readout. Can you see up top there? Oh, no, I would say that the 40 years have taken their toll on this once uh, prestigious piece of kit. Let's have a look around the side. Fantastic stuff. By the way, there we go. That's the end of the Johnny Lightning part one. Hope you enjoy uh, this one and uh, we'll have a look at some more stuff in part two. I think we're going to follow up on this uh, topper story. part of this video we are going to have a good look around Otter's Chevrolet Corvette from Greenlight and uh, this is based off the uh, car that was featured in the Animal House um, if you remember rightly um, Otter is the president of Delta House and uh, 
thanks to she snail put me right on that one i had it down as john belushi's car um but it wasn't his it is actually explained on the back here eric otter statens 59 blah 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 parked at the rainbow motel on old mill road throughout the movie so it spends its whole life parked up so uh, it's now it's time to free the piece and I'm going to pass this over to my lovely little assistant Kid5 who's going to uh, try and get into this amazing green light. Um, here we go. Um, while she's doing that, you can say hi as well by the way. Hi. While my little assistant is doing that, we'll have a look at my entire green light collection. I mean, we have this lovely truck that's just uh, come my way. This was given to me by Lamar, as was this beautiful Corvette. Wow, what a piece. Um, obviously, just recently, um, I've cracked this piece here as well. This is a very early green light from Series 1. And um, I got this piece here from WTTFOR in a competition. So there we go, that's all the green lights I have. All these are presumably in the 164 scale. And uh, all of them are just absolutely sumptuous. Here's a quick reminder, wow. That's what you love about green light there, right there. It's a shame this one has got no opening details. How's the uh, opening going, assistant? Good. Good, have you actually managed to get in the box yet? No. I didn't think you would. <laughs> Wait, I just made a hole. Oh, we've got a hole. We've finally got a hole here going on. Oh, dear me. So finally, I think my little assistant has finally managed to get it open. So do you want to pass it back to me, please, Kid5? Wow. And as you can see there, the blister's taken a pounding. But I think we're going to be all right. We can get in there. Whoa, there we go. We can pull it out. Whoa, there she is. You don't see too many of these, I don't think, in the world. It's got a little bit of cut damage there. Wow, isn't that just gorgeous? Have a quick look around the piece there as it came out of the packet. Oh, look at those emblems on the front there. Very nice detail. All the grill works nicely decaled up. Fantastic. That red and white livery is just so iconic of that particular, this particular vehicle, I should say. And look at that rear end. Whoa, that's so 59. That's just awesome. And also, just to help us out, it's got Animal House written in the back there. That is just wicked. Look at all that lovely detail. Thank you so much, Lamar. This is an awesome piece, and I think it's got an opening uh, opening bonnet, perhaps? Oh, yes. With a lovely little orange block in there. <laughs> oh, wow, that is awesome. Look around the base. Metal base, rubber tyres. Somewhat uh, steamroller-ish, which is uh, the nature of the beast. Wow, what a thing. Just stick that next to my uh, my other green light Corvette. Fantastical. Yes, this is a very very tasty piece of kit. It's got uh, decals everywhere you need them. The uh, the rear end is just sumptuous. I mean, look at all that tail like detail. That is beautiful. And the very nice thing about this particular model, the 59 Corvette, is A, the Hot Wheels one is just scary, and B, this will fill in a lovely gap in my Corvette's collection. And the reason being is because I never had a 59, not a decent one. I'm so grateful to Lamar to, for sending me this particular one. and. Uh, I'm going to show you a little lineage of this uh, Corvette, starting with the uh, original Cor 55 Corvette and probably end up with the 63 Corvette. It's compliant for track days, all the safety equipment is present. Now, I like the new lens features here on the back. Thank you so much. Something I got to practice on my channel. If you guys have any questions or comments, 
please leave those below. Feel free to subscribe. Thank you to all my subscribers. Take care, everybody. God bless you and your families. Out of 5,000. Fantastic. YouTube. Fantastic. YouTube. That is a cool looking piece. I originally said oh, I could have that one. But uh, why not just get the whole release while you can rather than have to head for it online later. That is a cool looking piece. This is sick. I'll save the portions for last since I'm such a porch guy. Portions are too hard. This is sick. This is the release that's going to be hoarded. I consider it hoarding, hoarding it myself. That is a cool looking piece. This Urban Outlaw livery definitely works on Porsches. Very, very cool. Look at that blue interior. It's got a road cage compliant for track days. All the safety equipment is present. Now, I like the new lens features here on the back. YouTube!